Hi, my name is Tina and I work at the York County Library in South Carolina. In this community helper video, we are going to learn about bees. It's spring again and we've been seeing bees buzzing all over the place. We went to Griggs Road Elementary where they were installing a beehive. Here is teacher Brittany Terry to tell us more. So, uh, my name is Brittany Terry. I'm a fourth grade math and science teacher here at Griggs Road Elementary School. A couple years ago, uh, my principal applied for a grant. It's called the Bee Cause Grant. It's really to educate kids in the community on taking care of bees. And four of us got to go and become trained and certified beekeepers. And so today we're finally getting, getting our bees. And we're going to be really bringing in a lot of classrooms and doing a lot of cool activities with the kids. Next week I'll be talking about symmetry, which is great to bring in the honeycomb and our first grade. Classes have been researching the best types of plants that bees need, and so they're going to be out here planting stuff. We've got an observation hive, so the kids will be coming in. They get to watch and see what, see what the bees do. The bees will live inside a clear beehive that is one of a kind. The bees will be able to come and go as they please through a pipe installed in the wall so that they can do their important duties. So what are bees' duties anyway? This is a community helper video, after all. Here is beekeeper John Gardner to explain. Well, probably 60 to 70% of everything that you eat off your table is a direct result of pollination. Pollination meaning they got to pollinate the flowers, the blooms on all the fruit trees and vegetable plants in order for them to grow and, and produce to uh, mature uh, fruit and vegetables. And if we didn't have that, like I say, we would not uh, you wouldn't have probably 50, 60, 70 percent of the food you eat. So they're, they're most important. It, they're, we got to have them. <laughs> I never realized just how much bees do for us and how important they are. But I'm still worried about them stinging me. And if they're in a hive, we couldn't do this, especially without suits on. Now, during the middle of the day when the bees are out foraging and if the weather's right, then you can go in there, they pay no attention to you unless you get in there where the guard bees are inside the hive, then they might uh, challenge you. But normally, uh, they go on about their business. But if you invade their home, it's just like anybody else. If your home gets invaded, you're gonna defend it. And that's what they'll do. They have nothing here to defend yet. Oh, okay, so if I leave them alone, they'll leave me alone. Good to know. Now it's time to move the queen into the beehive. The beekeepers have to be very careful not to hurt the queen while releasing her. They're going to try to eat this way and free the queen up uh, to get her to work. Okay. They're trying to get her out of there. And the reason she's in the cage is for them to get used to her pheromones. So when she comes out, they'll be ready to go to work for her. Don't, yeah, you, you, don't don't want, her. you don't want to, you barely want to take it in, because you certainly don't want to damage the queen. Don't hurt her. Because if you hit her, you'll kill her. And I just twist it a little bit, try to encourage it. I don't get no hurry doing this. Let's see. Now I'll take it out. What that does, in case that can is a little bit old, it'll form a crust on it, and he's breaking the crust, and he's giving them a sort of a route to follow. So with the queen moved in, the bees are eager to follow. They have three eighths of an inch to squeeze through, and with 15,000 of them, they have to be patient. All right, if y'all want to come over here and watch them crawl in, this would be a good shot right here. They're going to start walking in. See, you see them, you watch them, watch them, you see them crawl in now because the queen's in there. They'll start migrating on in. You see them? So with all the bees moved into their new home, they seal it up and get ready to install it inside. You know that that has to come off. No, I'm just saying you know that has to come off. How about that? But when you put him up in there, I think I'm like this, so they have access to the outside here. We've got a plate right here. Yeah. What do you do, Justin? This sits on a pivot, so we just drop it down here and lift it up and set, so they can swing it on both sides. It'll pivot. Put this where we don't want to lose this. The bees have a jar of sugar water to feed on and are already testing out their tube to the outdoors. Okay. 
This project has been in the works for a long time, and we spoke to the principal of Griggs Road Elementary, Nicole Thompson, to learn more. Honestly, our teachers and students are phenomenal, and I truly believe that education matters. It has been a process. It's been a two-year process, um, but we are glad that we are here. Um, our students will learn a lot about bees, but they're going to actually be able to apply what they're doing. Um, they're going to create a bee garden themselves. Our first graders will do that. Our fourth graders actually have already created planters in the shape of hexagons, um, which is kind of a bee symbol to really get them prepared. So 100%, it's about the students and, and letting them see that there is life beyond school and how to apply it. It was an amazing day at Griggs Road, one that I will never forget. I learned so much about our most underrated community helpers.